So, what would happen if Eve wouldn't pick up the fruit from the tree? There has been allegation that because Eve disobeyed Adam, she brought about the fall of the humanity. Well, did she really? Professor Sally Frank from the Drake University, where she teaches law, used the case of Eve for teaching her students skills of storytelling. But this is actually a very good case also for Moot Court. Moot Court is a simulation that gets the students to get into the role of lawyers. They can play the different role, judges, prosecutors, and they can immerse being a witness or being an advocate or a judge. Well, but why do we do it? There might be more things in heaven and earth that are not dreamt of in our philosophy, but what we know is that when it comes to methods of teaching, lecture is the least effective. That's why our presentations are supposed to be so short, so to keep your attention. And we also know what Confucius said. What did he say? He said, I heard and I forgot. I saw and I remembered. I've done it. And then I understood and then I really grasped the issue. Therefore, we are very keen in academia for legal clinics. Clinics sounds like medicine, isn't it? But in fact, what it is, is a practice. Is a possibility for students to practice. There are different kinds of clinics. For example, there is a life client clinics where the students are coming and they are having opportunity to help regular people who are coming to them under the supervision of their professors. But the clinic that I want to talk today about is street law clinic. Street law? No, it's not about prostitution, although it might be. Street law, well, it's like streetwise, a bit, not a sneaky, but a smart one. Street law provides students with a really good, effective legal skills, while at the same time practicing in a public, practicing in a settings where there are real people. Students in the class of street law are usually prepared in the material, legal material, skills, which helps them to use that material, and then they are also getting skills which provide them ability to go and teach in schools and in prisons or in any other places. Well, actually, teaching is not a good word, because they are actually sharing the knowledge that they get, and they try to share it the way which shows that love got a lot of tools that helps to solve everyday problems. Well, how do we do it? It's a course at the university that lasts 10, 15 weeks, and each course, each time, you have to have a very good scenario. And this scenario is, you, you've got several elements of knowledge, skills, and values. Students are preparing it themselves, or they're preparing that under the supervision of the professor. When it comes to knowledge, they have to know how the law looks like. And just imagine, if he's coming to a class and she's asking, how is it in your law? Is it really that I have to obey Adam? And Adam is quite sure that he's superior, he's a pater familias. So, yeah, he thinks that he's right. Within the knowledge part, students are finding out what the law is really saying about it. And today, in most of the legal materials from the Constitution, through the family law, up to the covenants, well, you will learn that actually partners are equal. Man, woman, wife, husband, they are equal within the marriage. And if they have problem with it, skills helps to show what you can do with the situation. So on the one hand, you can offer mediation. And if this is a choice, then you have to know what it is, how to start it, what are the legal steps to do it, 
But if this is not what you want, you can get up with divorce. But even with divorce, you have to write the paper, make a phone call, go to the court, knows how the court behave. So that's the skills part. But there is also this values. What is it? Well, that's space where we actually did not create the law, but we can discuss it. And we can also discuss in a street law clinics the things that are controversial, the things that are not easy. And the question is, what is marriage? Is it just a contract? Is it power? Or is it maybe the union of people who that way share their autonomy, share their dignity? And if this is so, well, the question is, why we deprive so many just because of their sexual orientation or sexual identification to have the right to marry? That's what the students do when they build the scenario of the class. We have it, but now they have to know how to do it, and we already know that lecture is not a choice. So they have to learn and they have to apply interactive methods. There are multiple of it. It starts with an icebreaker where we can each talk so we get on ease. Then there is a brainstorm, there is small groups, there are little mood courts, plenty. You just have to adjust what you do to the methods you are using. And then comes the last part, which isn't easy. This last part is that they have to go and perform. Frankly speaking, it's not so easy to stand up and talk. And lots of people have a... They are afraid of it, they feel anxious, this jitter, that's probably the words. But in street law, we've got uh, magic tools. We've got different magic possibilities to overcome it. When you are to get on a stage, you would prefer to disappear. But is it possible? Actually, you don't even need to have this magic womb. All you need is the methods. The first methods that we use is methods called Viktor Oshatinsky method, because it is coming from him. All what you need is respect for the audience. Once you have a respect for the audience, you have to have a message that you want to send, communicate. When you've got a message and you've got a communication and you start doing it, you actually cease to exist. It very much helps. Okay, that's one. But how to do it? How to communicate that message? The second magic is do it simply. Short sentences, simple words. And that we take from management. If you cannot explain the problem in a simple way, with the simple words, you probably don't know what the problems look like. And that's important for students who are studying law, because at the second year, they already know a lot of Itali the, the, the Latin, and they mixed up Latin for legal skills. All right? But with this comes the third element. When you go out and when you start talking about the law, people asking you a lot of questions. And what to do when you don't know the answer? Well, we teach our students to say simply, I don't know. I don't know is a very good sentence when you know something. You don't need to be an expert in everything. The truth is, we failed in Krakow. In Krakow, then they don't buy it. In Krakow, they say it's a very interesting question. We'll come back to this next week. Okay? You can do it as well. So, you've got already scenario. You've got methods. You know how to do it. So, you go and you do it. And with this, I have to make a small confession. Because the truth is that when you see students coming and the way they look and the way they behave, you think, my goodness, they will not manage. They think the same. So what street law teaches you is don't judge people at first sight and don't expect too much. The first class, the first scenario is far from perfect. The second and the third is a little bit better, but far from perfect again. But this being bold and never regular comes around the fourth class. Is it magic? No. Don't judge the people at the first sight, but remember that with the practice and the environment that we created while teaching the street law courses, you can manage. What is the secret behind? 
It is an atmosphere which is safe. It is lack of hierarchy. So professors know more because they're doing it longer, but it doesn't mean that they come always with the best solution. Sometimes people who are just starting are coming with the magic ideas and very good one because they just started. So in a situation when we each one teach one, you are getting along quite well. And I must admit that students who participate in those classes, they are usually going out later on and they are doing whatever they want. But they are also having this civic understanding of civic duty to share. And they often are saying that this was the best what's happened to them, both in school, prisons, which is understandable, but also at the universities. And I also must admit that street law was transformative experience, not only for my students, but also for me. And it's happened when I was at Fulbright in the United States and got invited to talk about how we teach law in Poland. And after I did my speech, I was approached by a man. It was Ed O'Brien, the one who set the street law. And he invited me to come to Georgetown for the introductory course. Georgetown was okay because I was at the American University, but that was supposed to be on Sunday, and Sunday I wasn't very happy about, so I didn't know how to say no, so I said yes. And I promised myself, yeah, after 15 minutes, I'm off. After 15 minutes of the introductory class of Professor Rick Raw, I was actually as much involved as the rest of the students. So I stayed as an adjunct student for the first semester and adjunct professor for the second. And later on, together with the Street Law Inc. and with another professor, David McQuaid Mason, who, like me, came several years before and then brought this street law to Dunbar at the South African University. That was really a great experience to do it together. And we did it in places like Ireland and Kazakhstan, England and Tajikistan, because street law is good for every place, because what it does, really, it gives people this being bold, it gives them tools to solve the problem and shows that the law might be complicated, might not exactly opposite, might be complex, but not always complica complicated. Once you've got a tools, you can solve the problems with the legal tools and not with aggression and not with just demanding things which are impossible. So if Adam and Eve would choose mediation, what would happen? He might come to the conclusion that the paradise is wherever she is. And the students in the street law class, Carolina wanted, what would happen if, 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 wouldn't pick up from fruit from the tree? Yeah, you can even sing if you want to. But what would happen to if, well, what tree it was? Wasn't it the tree of knowledge? So if she wouldn't pick the fruit from the tree, we wouldn't be able to distinguish good from bad. So actually, you can come to conclusion that it was a proper thing, and it's good that the Eve pick up the fruit from the tree. Thank you.